This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back. Uh, you can say welcome back to me. This is my first uh, time back in the studio for a couple of weeks. I've had some other commitments at uh, University of Hawaii. And now I am back with you. My name is Dave Stevens. I'm the host of the Cyber Underground. Glad to be back here with you. We were just discussing what a happy time of year this should be. Yet every time we're on the air, <laughs> We seem to be the bad news show. With me to uh, to help me out today is uh, Hal, the network guy, Hal Cochran, professor of IT at uh, Capulani Community College. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back Good on time. the show. Dave. Thanks for joining me. Uh, do we have a My topic pleasure. today? You just want to go back and forth. And I think something seems to be something, something important, important happened. What happened in the I last? I remember what it was. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> the, uh, the someone released the Kraken. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so net neutrality has been taken off the table. Uh, so let's discuss a little bit of the history of net neutrality. So uh, ISPs have been a uh, able to run rampant uh, since their inception, all the way up until about 2015. And, uh, and then the, um, there was a court battle over uh, the, uh, let's see, this is Tom Wheelman, former chair of the SEC, decided that he'd like to see the ISPs run like major utilities or telecoms, where there's limits on what they can restrict and not restrict. And there's, you know, you gotta have fairness across the board. So if I'm the water company and I don't like you, I can't shut off your water. I still gotta supply you with water, right? So mm -hmm. they wanted to supply you with water or tel telecommunication services. So you're like Ma Bell or the phone company. Well, that was a big battle. Uh, it got fought out, and in the Obama era, it got uh, finalized. It went to the U.S. District Court of Appeals in District of Columbia, so Washington, D.C., and the, the finding, if you guys want to look it up on the internet, this is, uh, uh, the finding was 15-1063. You can look that up in the U.S. You can see the actual findings of the, the Court of Appeals. It's a little boring. It's kind of dry reading, but it's great for getting to sleep. I, I found, you know, a little scotch, read the Court of Appeals thing, and out like a light. So anyway, uh, that, that allowed net neutrality across the board. And this has been an ongoing fight. I guess they've been fighting this for a decade, going back and forth. And every time we change uh, to a new administration, a new political party comes into power, this swings back, the pendulum swings back the other way. And yesterday it swung back. So Ajit Pai is our new FCC chairman. And he was actually on the, the board that voted on this in 2015, and he voted against it. And our new administration kind of likes that behavior and said, wow, you don't like the uh, FCC, so we're gonna put you in charge of it. Like Rick Perry's in charge of the, the uh, organization Oops. that no one can remember. What is that organization's name? There was a three departments he wanted uh, to get rid of, but he's in oops. charge of. Oops, I can't. I can't. Oh yeah, Department of Energy. That's right, the one. right. That's the one. So that's the one. Now he's in charge of that one, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and uh, Matt Pruitt is in, in charge of the EPA, the guy who sued the EPA all those times. So of course, Ajit Pai is in charge of the SCC now. And uh, he really rammed this vote down everybody's throat, but the, most of the panel is Republican anyway, so they voted for deregulation or taking away net neutrality rules. So let's discuss what happens now. I mean, everybody's been talking about you know, the boogeyman. Net neutrality has been taken away now. And I, I'd like to be fair and present both sides of the argument. So I'll try my best to represent uh, Ajit Pai and the Rep Republican Party and business interests, you be the other side. You tell me, what's this going to damage okay. in America? So let, let's start by going back even further than, than you did. Okay. Because the, the internet started out uh, as the ARPANET, and it was, it was built, you know, of uh, research and government. Uh, All right, uh, DARPA, so ocean. Defense Advanced yeah. Research Project. So Association, right? The internet was was essentially built primarily with taxpayer money, right? And that's part of the uh, justification for saying, well, this, this should be a fair and and an open landscape, right? It, it, sh it shouldn't belong, you know, to the ISPs or to the company because this was built, you know, by the government primarily with, uh, you know, with, with taxpayer money. That's right. The original infrastructure was mm -hmm. built with taxpayer dollars in a military kind of environment, right? Because, Connecting bases. Because if if the ISPs had built this network, then it would be a lot easier for them to say, well, we built it, we own it, we want to control it. Right. But it's that, that, that's not the case. They just kind of, they just kind of run it and manage it, uh, but they, they didn't actually create it. No, they that upgraded it, though. It. They've put money into it since then. Oh, certainly. Yeah, they so they made an investment. Equipment yeah. and, and yeah. So, but but it, it came from, uh, originally, you know, from 
uh, taxpayer money. That's why people like uh, Tim Berners-Lee, who was one of the creators of World Wide Web, has been promoting mm -hmm. net neutrality because, probably because of this, because he was back in that era when DARPA was doing this project, uh, and then it got used by universities next, yes? And it was used a lot for research, yeah. uh, research universities, yeah. Uh, and, and so it was always, uh, it was always kept as just a, a, an open, you know, for everyone gets the same access to it. You know, it's completely open and fair, and uh, no favoritism toward you know commercial activities versus other types of ag of, of activities. And that and that's what these uh, these these laws had, uh, you know, were were created to do. And so now, w without these laws, now uh, pretty much ISPs can do almost anything they they want with uh, the network that. They control it, and an analogy might be, uh, you know, like the freeway. So mm. on, on H one, ev everyone has uh, uh, free and equal access to get in, in, into the left lane. You know, if, that, if, if that's moving faster. So, what if instead of that, they now said, "Oh, well, you have to pay extra now if you want to get in the left lane. If you're gonna, if if you're just gonna pay the standard rate, you're gonna stay and go slow in the right lane." That's essentially what what the internet could, you know, end up being. Uh, now, because they can charge you, you know, uh, for different types of content. They can charge you for faster delivery of content. They can protect their own their own content uh, and and get it to load faster than someone else's content, so that you're more likely to use their product than, than someone else's. Uh, so there, there's a whole lot uh, they can do now to. Uh, almost all these ISPs are now are also in the content and media business. They're not. Oh, they're not just providing not just internet, internet access. Internet. They they provide the news and the services they and the streaming media. News, and, streaming yeah. media, television. Uh, this, so uh, they have a vested interest yeah. in providing their content over others. It would profit them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, let's say that your ISP is affiliated with uh, with Netflix. Mm. They could make network Netflix run faster than than Hulu, so that you're more likely to. To, to sign up with them. Sign up with right, the network right, because right. you're going to get faster, uh, faster service from from uh, from Netflix than you're going to get from other. So sw swing that pendulum back the other way. Your your example of the freeway access where you have to pay more for the fast lane. Uh, I used to live in California, and that exists. Toll you roads. can get a yeah, you can get a toll road, and there's a fast pass you can get to use that left lane at certain hours of the day. Um, I'm not really sure if that's effective. I've, I've never seen any studies of saying that's effective or not effective. But again, it, it's not run privately. That is a public service, and the, the, the government is recouping some of the development costs by, by saying you can use this fast lane if you pay more money. We built mm -hmm. you a toll road. We have to charge you a toll because it costs money, and we didn't have money in the budget, so mm -hmm. we have to pay ourselves back. But ISPs have a different interest in mind, right? You have, uh, let, let's go back to your example. Uh, say we package things. Um, uh, one ISP package is Netflix and um, the Washington Post and New York Times. Mm -hmm. But another uh, vendor might do Hulu, uh, Sling TV, and what? The uh, Los Angeles Times and Fox News, right? Mm -hmm. But if you didn't have a choice of which vendor, you'd have to choose one or the other. It, whatever your state is offering, I think Arizona is very limited. Someone just told us that just a few minutes ago. You just have a, a limited, like Comcast, right? Whatever Comcast wants to feed you. And I guess the danger is, and we saw this with the 2016 election, President Trump actually admitted he didn't think he'd be president without social media. So if you can control which social media outlets are loaded faster in a browser, then you can control people's public opinions. So I, I think the example I was, I was thinking of is, say we have uh, Facebook and another uh, vendor that does social media, and you don't like the other vendor, so you slow them down so it takes five or six seconds for each page to load. Now, we know the attention span of especially the millennials in this mm -hmm. you know, is very short. Click, click, and if it doesn't load right away, yeah, I'm going to click off. something else. Right, yeah. right. So if that's not loading, you're going to go to Facebook because it loads faster. So you've, you've essentially limited the access to the information, but not really. I mean, if you're patient, you can get that information. Mm -hmm. But we all know that's not the no new generation. That, no one's patient anymore. Not even I'm patient. I actually get upset when I'm in the uh, drive-through at McDonald's and it takes longer than five minutes. But that's ridiculous, 
right? I'm thinking, what, what the heck are they doing this for five minutes? This is fast food. Yeah, it's fast food. <laughs> I, that's terrible. I know. I'm, I'm, I've been sucked in, and I'm a consumer. I totally admit it. But there's a danger, right? You could conceivably change people's opinions. Now, the, the argument, I guess, uh, from a business standpoint is, and this is kind of weird. I heard this argument. So we're packaging Netflix and, and, um, and Washington Post and the news media we like over here with this vendor. And we part, uh, package uh, Hulu and, and Sling TV over here with this vendor. And the consumer has to choose which one they want to go with. And the Republican Party is actually saying this is consumer choice. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but currently, we don't have to choose a vendor. All these are available at the same speed. It seems to me that the the uh, the better consumer choice is when everything is out there mm. equally, and right. I can choose amongst absolutely everything. But yeah. uh, what I'm hearing is is uh, some of the experts say that they, they expect now that uh, internet is is going to be uh, sold in different packages, like the way that that they do cable TV. So you won't be able to choose individual sites. You'll buy the package that has you know the New York Times and Netflix in it, or you buy the other package that has the Washington Post and Hulu, uh, but for each package you're going to pay more, and you're not, you can't, you know, select one site. You're going to have to buy, maybe you only want the one site, but you may have to buy half a dozen right. uh, this pack to get that one site, kind like of the way that the, TV. that the cable TV is done now. So right. if you love the way that the cable TV companies do their business, you're probably going to love the new internet. There's, there's another side of the story where, where people theorize another eventuality where everything's still available to everybody, but uh, that certain vendor that you can buy a package with that includes Netflix and the Washington Post or New York Times, they'll let you get to those for free and it won't limit your data plan, unlike your phone or your iPad, right? Mm -hmm. But if you choose to do the New York Times or the Press Telegraph in London, those apply to your data plan. And they will take off the however many megabytes you get per month. Uh, like Hulu, you stream with Hulu instead of Netflix, you get charged. Where you go, Netflix is free. Now that's great, except now Netflix has customers that don't subscribe to that particular vendor because maybe they're not even in that area. So the package isn't available. In that case, the customers who are paying $12.99 a month for Netflix, well, Netflix is not going to have to pay that vendor more money to have their people outside of the package access Netflix, so that where, gets passed on to the consumer. Where is that money going to come from? They're going to charge They're you. They're going to charge you and I. So that's another scenario where even if the ISPs don't do this, they could throttle other vendors. And if those vendors don't want to be throttled and they want service for everybody across the board, they're going to have to pay more. Mm -hmm. And paying more means we have to pay more. Is they they can't they can't speed up the packets on. Uh, the the network. All they can do is slow them down. So they'll right. slow down certain ones and let let others go through. I mean, this is what we call in networking QoS or quality, quality of service. service. Yeah. You can you can, uh, you can prioritize and give certain sites or certain types of traffic priority or a higher quality of service than than others, and then those will go through faster, and 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 you're going to get a better uh, experience from those sites than you would from you know, other sites that aren't. That have a lower quality service. So what do we do about this? I, it just feels like we're along for the ride. There's nothing we can do except express our opinions at the next polls. Uh, yeah, and I, I was one of those who went to the FCC site. I, I left uh, several comments. There, 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 there was a public comment uh, mm. uh, period where people were, were and they, I, I, I heard that they got millions and millions of there comments, were, which is there unusual. Were bots. So they said there were bots involved, and several and, million of them were repeats or yeah. or bot generated. And there were, a, there was a very large number that came from uh, Russian email addresses. I understand. What is? Wait, really? <laughs> How is that ever possible in this country to be influenced by another country? That's never happened. My gosh. Okay, <laughs> we're going to take a little break. Uh, we're going to take one minute to pay some bills, and we'll be right back. Until then, stay safe.
afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Welcome back. That was just enough time to, well, not do anything. Well, I hope you enjoy our public service announcements. We're back here at the Cyber Underground with more good news. Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, net neutrality has been taken off the board, so now we're trying to figure out what the heck do we do now as consumers? And we were just talking about that. Uh, not much we could do, but uh, this was a, it sounds like a partisan decision down party lines. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pendulum swung back the opposite way during the Obama administration. Now with Trump, it's, it's going back. And uh, we have... Um, I think a duty to go out and vote. There are something called midterm elections, which are notoriously low turnout elections for Democrats. Mm -hmm. I, I wish that was not true, but it gives Republicans an incredible advantage, um, and they know it, they got it, and they've used it. We should go out there and, and we should vote and, and use our voting power. Uh, I've also heard something disturbing uh, on the radio this morning that Hawaii has probably the lowest voters turnout in the entire country. I did not know that. How can we be below Alaska? <laughs> and there's got to be people out in the wilderness of Alaska that don't bother to walk into town 60 miles or so to well, cast their vote. Well, they have to fly in, in their little Cessna oh, yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Or come by dog snowmobile, sled. dog sled, yeah. right? How can we be lower than that? We're not that remote. Um, in fact, Honolulu is becoming quite a big city now. Mm -hmm. um, progress uh, it changes everything, I guess. But it's, uh, it's strange that I think... Um, we're seeing bigger voter turnouts, like the whole Roy Moore situation. And I'm hopeful that that voter turnout uh, will happen here in, and in other states, and maybe we can swing the pendulum back and get re re representatives that are more uh, in tune with uh, making things fair and equal for everybody, not just for the corporations. Yeah, uh, hopefully uh, enough of these uh, things that are happening, like, like net, net, net neutrality and, and other uh, things that the, the the Trump administration and the Congress, you know, have been uh, trying to put through that will hopefully energize people on the the, uh, the other side to come and vote in the, in those in those midterms. I think that's what happened in a lot in Alabama. You know, I think you're right. I think so. People got energized because they were passionate about the topic, right? Mm -hmm. So if we can just keep that passion going. I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Now, getting back to net neutrality, I, I thought of an example that that might actually be relevant and uh, would unfortunately support Ajit Pai's argument that they're trying to spur innovation by making this, this just change. And uh, the argument against spurring the innovation, of course, is uh, um, say, and this is the example, this is so funny. I gave an interview with KITV News yesterday, uh, a 30 minute interview, they used six seconds. And this is the example I used, and they took six seconds of it and put it out there with absolutely no context on either side of it, and it just hung out there, and I, I sounded like a complete moron, in my opinion. <laughs> Here's the example I used. So if you took um, the same situation we have now, and uh, say ISPs didn't want to be very friendly, and there was no net neutrality rules, and you swung back time to, say, 1989, the only big vendor on the market was AOL. Mm -hmm. Now, they did try to crush other people, and it was hard for other vendors to sneak in there like Earthlink did after a while. But then you, you swing forward a little bit further. Um, Yahoo came out. So AOL, being the big boy in the block, could have theoretically prevented Yahoo from becoming the major search engine it was back mm -hmm. then. Yahoo, in turn, in five years, became a huge player in the market. They were charging for the rotating banner ads on their homepage. I think they charged... $20,000 per view. Wow. And they did that three times uh, a minute, every minute of the day, just for that one banner on their homepage. I mean, they were making some serious coin. But then 1999, Google came out. So how was Google supposed to grow if ISPs could say, we like Yahoo, but every time you go to Google, we're going to slow you down. So yeah, Google wouldn't have been that popular. 
except that it actually was a search engine that didn't suck, which was their original business plan, which I liked. <laughs> so now we're all dependent on Google. So new search engines, you'll notice, don't really come out anymore. No, it's been a while. It's been quite a while. So these net neutrality rules might have actually helped. So say you and I created an app, and it, it depended heavily on Google's uh, mapping services. Right? It was some kind of thing that linked to Google Maps. So every time someone made a request, it had to link to Google Maps and get some information back. So some internet activity going on there. But what if, I don't know, Google came out with that same thing, or Yahoo came out with that same thing, or MapQuest came out with the same app. They didn't want us to compete with them. So they made a deal with the ISP. Hey, every time someone makes these requests from this app, slow down that traffic. Right? If I'm hailing an Uber and it takes me five minutes, but I hail a Lyft, and it takes me 15 seconds. I'm where, a Lyft customer. Where are you going to go to? Yeah, where, where are you going to go? Especially when, you know, hey, i got to get there right now. I, ha I have to mm -hmm. be at that bar right this minute. You know? I'm going to you know, go with the fastest vendor, right? Uh, it may not be the fanciest car, but it was the fastest internet speed. Uh, my example would be, if we wanted to overcome that, what if somebody like, I don't know, Time Warner uh, and Google got together, as a company and said, mm -hmm. we're gonna provide you all your services and connectivity to the internet, and we will provide net neutrality across the board. So you sign up with us, there's no restrictions to anything. That'd right? Then it would actually be competing and the other big vendors on the block would have to compete, which would support Ajit Pai's argument that this is spurring competition in the market, and it would drive down the, the price a bit. So his argument would hold water. What do you think about that argument? Uh, well, clearly I'm not, I'm not an expert in, uh, in, in that area uh, mm. of uh, how supply and demand is going gonna, is gonna to work in, as well. In, 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 in my opinion, I think it could end up hurting the little guy, right, who could now come onto the internet Right and, and get the same access as as the big companies yeah. and the same you know throughput and bandwidth. But uh, now with this new rule, uh, he's going to have to compete with right. these big companies. It's going to it's going to make it uh, a lot more difficult. I the mean, cost of doing business, to, right? He's going to have to pay for more yeah. access. Mm -hmm. And so his startup costs are going to be substantially more. Where mm -hmm. it could have been a million dollars before, now it's two million, and part of that is going to be paying. If, Fees, if yeah. the ISP is even willing to give him uh, the the same bandwidth as the big companies, if if it's if it's uh, an ISP that you know is owned by the same parent company as one of his competitors, they may just refuse it and say, no, we're not going to give you you know the top speed because we don't want you to compete uh, with our partner here. And I don't think there's anything that anybody can do about that. I mean, that's no great. That's that, great. It goes right back to our example with Uber and Lyft. Mm -hmm. Say uh, Time Warner buys Uber. Now they own Uber. They have a vested interest in you using Uber. So they're going to slow Lyft down to a crawl. And there's not much. And you can't Lyft do anything can do about, about it. it. The current rules say Lyft will die in that area, period. Uh, that's, that's a real concern. You know, I think, um, for, and I have to present the Republican argument on this, the, the other part of the pendulum. Uh, that scenario, they would say, was, is not likely to happen because that would be a merger against public interest. So they would have to go through some kind of a merger. I would hope okay that that from, would happen. Through the courts. I would hope so, I would too. certainly hope that that would happen. But we've seen some mergers that have been pretty big it, it, lately. The trend has been, you know. Consume, yeah. Uh, more, more, more. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all of these mergers. And as, and as we said earlier, the, the, uh, the ISPs are, have been merging with these content and media companies. Yeah. So not only do they control the content, they now control delivery of that content. Right. And so that's a lot of So in certain power. areas, if, if you only had one very, so let's go with Arizona. Say they only have one vendor, and let's make Comcast the evil person now, right? So sorry, Comcast, we're just going to pick on Comcast. you for a minute. Uh, Arizona only has Comcast. You have to sign up with Comcast. Now, Arizona, if whoever's running Comcast in Arizona says, we like only our point of view, so we're only going to give you faster internet access speeds to Fox News, Breitbart, uh, rightnation.com, I mean, whatever supports your cause, right? Mm -hmm. But if you try to say, uh, I want to see the Press Telegraph in London or BBC News or I want to see uh, NPR or I want to go to Washington Post or New York Times, those are all going to slow down to a crawl. Ten-second load times for every page. 
90% of your audience right now is millennials. You've just lost all of them, and they're only going to be reading the content you want them to read. So you could make your state think the way you want. That's a little frightening to me. My question is, and I'm not sure what the answer is, is you know, we've talked about uh, slowing down certain content. Mm. Do they even have to provide that content? Could they actually shut off certain sites that they don't want you to access? That's a good question. I don't know. I know they have to make it public. If they're doing something to alter their access or speed, they have to actually inform the public. The they don't they have a say... history of actually abiding by those rules, <laughs> you know, but that, that is the rules. You have to tell people what you're doing. Um, but they've all come out with statements. You know, every, every one of these vendors has come out with a statement saying, we support net neutrality, we will not throttle bandwidth, we are going to be fair and honest and open about it. Well, then why change the rules? Well, you know, I know what they're they saying. These are spokespeople versus what's actually happening. So let's look at our own administration. There's Sarah Huckabee Sanders saying everything is fine. And then you look at what actually is happening, and it's not actually what Sarah's saying is happening. You know, there's a difference, right? They've spent millions and millions lobbying for this. Now, they have to have something in mind to, make some, to, to, to be changing something, to yeah. spend all of this money. They're not going to uh, spend it unless they've got... Some something on up this something's sleep. on the plate. They've got something yeah, in their going. mind that, that they they want to make some kind of a major change that they think is going to benefit them. I hope it. I hope somewhere along the line someone sees a benefit and stays with that, and it's not just based on just making millions of dollars for big companies. I, I hope that you know these statements are actually true. The the internet. I mean, for so long has been like a public trust. Okay, and now this essentially converts it into a commercial venue. So we'll just have to wait and see uh, how that affects uh, you know, what, what we're able to do on the internet and what companies are able to do and, and just have to see how it all, how it all shakes out. Time's going to tell. Mm -hmm. Time will tell to see if our uh, internet cable bill goes up, if my, if my Netflix subscription gets increased, if it's more money to get a uh, cable TV connection to the internet. Who knows? Uh, what else do you think uh, we should tell the public about what they should do? Go out and vote. Absolutely. We're in control that way. We can swing the pendulum back the other way with our vote. And if, uh, if the ISPs do start to block or slow down content uh, that you, you want to access, absolutely, you, you, you should complain. Yeah. You shouldn't just right? accept it. Complain. Complain. Uh, to the why, FCC. Yeah. Why is it so much slower when I go to Netflix than it is when I go to this other site? So you're still the FCC and your provider. Yeah, I don't have a lot of faith in the FCC <laughs> doing much because they're kind of behind this, but uh, usually companies will listen to, to customer complaints if they get enough. Absolutely, because they'll, they'll lose business. Try to take it right? seriously. It's all about the bottom line. Well, more good news. Merry Christmas, everybody. It's always oh, great oh, to oh. see you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and that's all the time we have for today. We'll see you next week. Until then, stay safe.